Hi, Mike's Carburetor Parts. I'm working on a Rochester Monojet one barrel carburetor that I'm rebuilding. I did a video previously where I uh, disassembled it and explained a few things. Uh, we cleaned it and now we're going to put it back together. Uh, I would like to mention one thing I should have mentioned when I uh, when we uh, before we uh, cleaned it was that you should uh, polish the accelerator pump wheel with crocus cloth just to get it all polished up um, the today's fuel doesn't have much lubrication in it and so uh, an accelerator pump cup can get damaged just by having a, the rough wall in there so the smoother you get it the better it'll be now I see this one is is pretty nice and smooth, but uh, but I would suggest uh, using a crocus cloth on it. Uh, you can get that at uh, most Lowe's or Home Depot, something like that. All right, so let's start putting this back together. First, I'll put the uh, throttle body on here. As I mentioned before, we didn't take it all apart, but we did get it clean. I blew out all the holes, and let's put the uh, idle mixer screw in it. Yeah, as a start and we're going to screw it all the way down until it seats gently and then we're going to turn it out about a turn and a half two turns uh, that'll be a good place to start your uh, final adjustment will be after you get the engine running and up to operating temperature you got a uh, throttle body gasket uh, now you can see this uh, hole right here it covers it over here but you see the uh, vacuum will go through this hole and travel through the slot here so it's actually not covered up I just want to point that out that confuses people otherwise make sure the holes are uh, none are covered up except for the uh, um, uh, casting holes alright so let's put this on here and get our two big screws here so a basic technique of uh, tightening things where you have two or more screws is to uh, alternate between them uh, you don't tighten one all the way and then tighten the other one that that gets things warped Okay Snug those down pretty good Okay, so we got that and the, the, the th throttle valve is not getting uh, Stuck or anything. That's the main thing and uh, I didn't take off the uh, fast idle lever here uh, but there it is. We we'll leave it on here for now, and uh, you can see how it's mounted. Okay. So the next thing is, uh, let's see. Let's start with the needle and seat in the float bowl. Yeah. Well, we'll just put the seat in for now. There is a gasket that goes on it, fits over it like that. Okay. Make sure you got all the old gasket off the seat. Won't do you much good to have two gaskets. I like to use a screwdriver that uh, fits the slot good because this brass is easy to uh, chip. And if you do chip it, don't sweat it too much because all the fuel cares about is the orifice down inside there. And it's pretty hard to damage that by uh, tightening it up, tightening it up here. The, well, you, the reason you don't want it damaged is because uh, it, when you get it stripped, it's hard to take in and out later. So, uh, all right. So we'll put in the um, main discharge, main fuel discharge, and we'll start with the check ball. And then you got this little gold colored spring, and then you take your T your T holds it all down okay now basically the uh, the gasket will hold that T down but 
what you want to do is take a hammer and chisel and uh, okay don't have a chisel out here and just take it and just wrap on it just easily just to stake it down a little bit so it doesn't pop out okay we we'll put the main jet in there no gasket The jet's in there. Uh, we'll get the accelerator pump in there. First, we got to put the delayer spring. It goes on like that, and then you got this little clip. Hold the spring on. There you go. That's the delayer spring. And what that does is delay it, delays it from popping back up too fast, or helps pop it back up, I should say. And then we got a return spring. It goes to the bottom. And then this goes in there. Make sure that uh, don't put any oil on the cup, the rubber cup. And just kind of roll it. I just kind of roll it like this to make sure it doesn't get folded over. There we go. You have to kind of hold it down and put our uh, pump arm on here, on here, like so. Okay. Yeah, I want to mention one thing I forgot to mention when I took this apart. Uh, your idle tube is right here. And um, you can take it out by heating up. To get your little propane torch out. Heat it up here and turn it upside down. Tap it on your bit workbench until it falls out. Because it's just pushed in there. Um, but there's no need to take it out. Just make sure you can blow through it easily. Uh, it's a very small orifice down at the other end of it. Uh, so you want to be sure it's all clear. Blow through it, make sure it comes out the other end. And uh, if you do that, you're good to go. If you have to get it out, heat it up here and tap on the bench until it comes out. Okay, I'm going to turn this upside down. we got to put our little uh, sleeve in here. And it goes like this. Some of these are uh, a lot thicker than this. It's thin one. I don't think you can get those, but uh, you can probably buy the the thicker ones that we have and then cut them down. But it fills this little hole right here, and you get it in there. And stake it down a little bit so it doesn't come out. And that just kind of keeps the lever straight. Okay, we're going to get our, uh, our rod started here. First we have our lever and the printing on it is going to be out. And the bigger, bigger one goes over here for the accelerator pump. It has a tit on both ends. And uh, so it, you get it started like that, like a so. And the other one um, has one end without the tit that will go into the stem of the uh, power piston when it goes through and then the end with the tit on it goes from the inside out uh, we got to get it lined up here to get it in there put it on first got them both in there. This is how they're going to look when you're done. Okay, so let's put, let's 
put it down for a minute and we will put the uh, accelerator pump in and the stem that holds it in there hold it down and then uh, fish the uh, rod in there Oh, oh shoot I let the thing yeah I need to tape it there we go that end up like this. Okay. And we're going to get the lever on there and you have to move the throttle a little bit to get it lined up. There we go. Okay, so it's ready. The stem's still in there. Like I say, put a little piece of tape on if you need to. The other one's on there. Okay, let's hook up the power piston. First we'll put in the return spring. Put the piston in there. metering rod lined up into the hole. Well first we gotta get our stem in here. This is what controls the power piston. And we'll come out the bottom of the float bowl so we can put the rod on it. Okay so it just goes into that slot right there. And then uh, make sure the metering rod lines up into the hole loosely. Doesn't fit in the hole tight. Okay. And then we're going to get our rod on there. A really small needle nose would help, would work better here. But this is what I have right now. Okay. All right. And there it's in there. See how it works? That's what it's supposed to look like. You see it moving everything up here. All right. So there we go. Now let's put our uh, float needle in there. Or excuse me. Put it on the. Uh, it's got a little um, clip right here that just fits onto the. Put it over the float here. Any place. And what that's going to do is uh, keeps that needle from sticking. Um, yeah, okay, let's put our little pin in like so. We got all of that, and we slide it down into the slot and get the needle in the seat. Okay, there we go. And make sure your uh, float is centered, whether it be this nitrofill or a brass float. Same thing, it needs to be centered. If you get it off to one side, it's going to rub on the side and cause it to stick. All right. 
and that's the way that is okay so let's see I think we'll go ahead and put the uh, bow, uh, top on I'm looking around at my parts here yeah okay so let's get the part on see this gasket split right here to go around your uh, power piston stamp fits on just like that um, and then uh, let's see this is going to go on like a so and we're never going to force anything and I think I told you about the uh, yeah, yeah I already did that okay I won't, won't repeat myself all right so let's get these bolts in we'll start out with these uh, two long ones excuse me there's three or four long ones <laughs> all right and then the short ones here And we're going to go from uh, corner to corner when we tighten these up. We're not going to tighten one up all the way and then go to the other one. That's how you warp these things. Most of them are warped anyway, but let's not exasperate the problem. And we just keep working back and forth. And make sure that nothing is uh, holding up the top. Alright, we're going to check and make sure uh, we didn't mess something up. Everything's moving like it should. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now. Let's put in our uh, pull down diaphragm here. Simply hooks onto the choke there. And you got to get it. Okay, first you gotta get get it turned right. Okay, now get off of there. Okay. There we go. Alright. See this vacuum hole right here has to line up with the one on the carburetor. Alright, so there we got that done. And fiddly sticks. Alright, put the cover on.
Okay, this carburetor happens to have a hot idle compensator which is used on uh, generally cars with air conditioning and what it's for as it gets hot this heats up and uh, bends and uncovers uh, a hole into the carburetor and it just vents a little more when it's hot. If it's missing don't sweat it too much you can't find these uh, it'll run without it. Just might get a little too hot if uh, you run an air conditioning on a 100 degree day. Alright, so it's got a little gasket here. You put that in there. And, and then you put your compensator in like a so. And then we just put the cap back on it. No gasket on the cap is necessary. And next we'll put on the fast idle rod and cam. And first of all the cam is, uh, the numbers printed on it are out, up uh, facing me. This has got a little tit on the end of it, on the rod. You just fish it in the hole up behind it like that. And then we'll take it and fish it in the slot up here on the uh, choke lever and stick it down here just like so and you got to have this screw with the shoulder on it or it just isn't going to work got to have a shoulder so the cam will move okay and to see if that works we close the choke and the throttle valve is closed. See it's going to be open just a little bit because the cam's holding it open. That's what it's supposed to do for fast idle. And you see it's on the fast part. Now we open the choke and that'll fall down and you see it's on the low spot and the choke valve is closed. That's the way it should be. Alright, so we got the choke. It's moving in and out. Uh, we got the pull down. What that pull down does is when it's cold, the choke is closed uh, and you step on the gas, it's going to uh, pull that choke open slightly so that it doesn't choke out. Just going to go something like so. Alright, there's adjustments for some of these. Uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, basically, uh, oh, one thing I did forget here. Let's get the... Uh, filter in. First your spring and your filter uh, will be like this so that the open end is towards the fuel line and then here's the fuel line, nut anyway. It's got a little bit of fuel line hooked to it. Okay. Now that gasket is usually uh, part aluminum part uh, there's some rubber rubberized stuff on it. I'm not sure what it's called, but helps seal it. These don't put any Teflon tape on it on any of this here. Um, that'll get in the carburetor for sure and cause you troubles that you aren't going to be able to find. All right, so that's it put together. Don't seem to have any parts left, not from this carburetor anyway. So you'll mount it on the car, put your mounting gasket on it, and uh, away you go. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you.